Hello and welcome to Butterfly Affection, a short visual novel developed by Freakily Charming. Uh, available on their Tumblr page, I guess, but uh, the translation though, I believe, was made by a fan on 4chan. So it's just kind of flowing around the internet. You, you have to go looking for yourself to find it. Uh, but basically, this game is about raising your very own daughter. Except that she happens to be an eldritch abomination. <laughs> I, I guess we'll see what that means. I guess let's just push start. Um, I guess the only thing I... Well, I don't know. I don't think this, this game actually, I, I believe, is actually pretty wholesome. So I don't know if there's any horror elements necessarily. Um, but let's just say the, the way the, the character that we interact with looks might be a little bit disturbing. I guess that that's the only like warning I'll give. But anyway... Uh, Today I was out a bit longer than usual, and the sun was already setting by the time I got home. Seeing my house, I got the keys ready in advance, reaching to my pocket. Uh, then I saw something illuminated by the street lamps out of, out of the corner of my eye. Oh. Uh, near my house, I saw something hard to describe on the sidewalk. Though the head, shoulders, and upper torso looked humanoid, the rest of the body did not. Okay, we're picking up a stray Elder's Abomination. The light crawling reminds me of an insect. Only a few parts of its body are insect-like. If anyone saw this outside their door, they would want to stay inside. It slowly turned my way, and seemed to acknowledge my existence, but made no move either toward or away from me. I don't know if it can speak like a person, or if it understands words at all. As creepy as it looked, it was still close to my house. I can't just leave it here, so I approach it. It doesn't make any sudden or threatening movements. Its only reaction to my touch is a light twitch. As I lift it to carry it off, I notice it shivering slightly. It looks really weak. It may not have the strength to move anymore. Okay. Oh, we have a choice here. <laughs> a stray insect girl. You know, at your doorstep, I guess. Oh, there's no saving system, it seems. Well, I mean, it is pretty short, but I do prefer to save. Well, you know, obviously I always pick the choices that... Um... You know, will lead to a bad outcome, so let's see what happens if we just leave it alone. You know, we'll just not interact with the, the game's entire premise and just go home. It looks weird. This is good. But like, I'm easy about having this strange thing near my house. I move further away and place it on the ground, pointing away from my house. I hope it goes away somewhere. Thinking that, I return home. Game over. You suck. Okay. So, I mean, obviously, instead of just, uh, you know, abandoning this poor eldritch abomination, we're going to take it home. This is a smart thing to do, obviously. I eventually make my way into the house, carrying something unfamiliar. Keep pressing enter. Okay. Wow. Just <laughs> hmm. interesting, you uh, know. Interesting physique. Uh observe. Although it doesn't appear injured, it's dirty from crawling around. It needs a bath. I better wash it off in the bathroom. If it's not hurt, maybe the reason it looks weak is lack of food and rest. Will it recover if I feed it and provide a place to sleep? Okay, we have choices. Uh, okay, so by the way, you, you press, uh, press in the mouse wheel to save. Save it there, I guess. And my version of the game apparently has saves from some other, you know, person's game. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess we can choose options. Let's give it something to eat. I don't know its biology, but all living things need nutrition. That's just common sense, but it has features resembling humans, insects, and mollusks. What would be appropriate to feed it? This monster girl. After thinking about it, I retrieve a banana from the kitchen. Oh, yes, potassium. It's edible to people and insects, and soft, nutritious foods are a good idea. I peel a banana and slice it up on a plate, and I leave it nearby. Nom nom. Wow. After seeing and smelling the food, it moved and began to eat the banana slowly. Seeing it eat for the first time, I noticed it had a long tongue. It held down the plate with his left hand and Hold single slices into its mouth. While its body resembled a mollusk, 
The unusually long tongue looked more reptilian. I expected to eat with a more insect-like motion. The more I looked, the less I understood. What a strange creature. Basically, it's a pet. Um, skinship, I guess. I don't know what kind of creature it is, but most animals familiar to people react positively to petting. Unsurprisingly, it keeps staring right at me as I softly touch its head. I pat its head slowly. It doesn't react positively or negatively, so I'll try again later. It just it is confused by your head petting. I guess give it a bath. But since it got dirty crawling around outside, I decided to carry it to the bathroom. After adjusting the temperature of the shower to look warm, I slowly started on the ends of its limbs. I was worried that it would freak out like a cat, but it remained calm and docile. With it being this quiet, I figured it would become more thorough. I carefully wash his body or soap. The human parts of its upper body have a texture like human skin, while the tentacle feels more smooth and slippery, and the insect parts feel more firm. No new discoveries or surprises are revealed, so it looks like I've learned all I can from washing it. You know, it, it's its lower torso just reminds me of intestines, you know? Uh, make it a bed? Well, I'm not comfortable t t uh, taking it to my bedroom yet, but it wouldn't be nice to leave it on a cold, hard floor tonight. I don't know if it's resistant to cold, and I don't want to tire itself out looking for somewhere comfortable. I set a towel out on the sofa and lay it down there. That should be adequate bedding with the addition of a blanket. Alright, well there you go. We've taken care of this stray insect monster girl. Great. Cool. There you go. Okay, oh my god, this is like a little journal. I found something rather strange near my house recently. Its heads, shoulders, and torso resembled those of a human, but the rest of its body was clearly not. I don't know whether it can talk or even understand speech in the first place. At first I thought it was creepy, but then I realized it was in a weak condition. After taking a while to decide, I did something unusual and took it home with me. I'm surprised that I decided to do such a thing, but it was too weak to leave alone. It's not aggressive or bothersome, so there's been no problems keeping it home so far. If it gets too out of hand, I can just uh, let it leave or kick it out at any time. There you go. Oh, now I can say. Okay. Okay, so there are safe points. It's just... Um... I can ask, because I was trying to manually save. So in order to manually save, you actually have to break the UI loop and, and press, press in the mouse wheel. Or the, what's it called? The, the middle mouse button. That's what it's called. Anyway. Oh. Well, here's day two. Oh, she looks a little different. Um, you know, it, it, she's less bony. You know, less bony here. That's good. I think. <laughs> no, I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Over a week has passed since I bought it, uh, or brought it home. While it seemed weak at first, after only a few days, it's exploring the room curiously. It moves in a very relaxed way, never rushing or knocking stuff over. But what's most surprising are the changes to its body. The end of its lower body has turned purple, and some kind of leg grew from its waist. The tentacle, which lacks a heartbeat, has grown as well. Oddly, the right uh, eye has developed a second iris. It's not uncommon for various types of animals to grow limbs, but for only one eye to double is strange for a living thing. I am curious as to how it will grow, but I also feel uneasy about it. I better try learning more, starting with communication. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's continue to beat it. Obviously, this will totally not go wrong. Uh, since the first day, I've only fed it fruits and vegetables. You know, a strictly vegetarian diet. Those seem safe, so I'll try cook dishes now. After I let the fried rice cool a little, I set it down. Since the food looks different from before, it takes some time observing the food before eating. It took a bit longer, but it ate the food quietly. It should be okay to expand its diet. You know, hopefully it doesn't have a taste for human flesh. Um, I pat its head again. Although I've done this many times by now, it continues to not react in a positive or negative way. However, when patting its head like this, it stares directly at me the entire time. It may be panicking or maybe wondering what I'm even doing. But since it never makes any kind of readable facial expression, I can't tell what's on its mind. I wonder if it'll begin to react if I continue. 
I mean, it kind of reminds me of like, yeah, it reminds me of like insects and reptiles in general, like any kind of like cold blooded creature. Like it, it does not react to like um, touching, you know, really, you know, that's kind of like a mammal thing. You know, like if you if you pet like your, I don't know, your lizard, like it, it's not going to feel anything, you know, it's like, it, like instinctually anyway. I mean, I know though sometimes like pet owners sometimes attribute uh, behaviors that they might be projecting, you know, that their head, they're, they're petting the lizards and it's like, seems like they like it. But, but as far as I know, I mean, you know, those kind of animals don't really, you know, they don't understand what that means. <laughs> you know, they don't, they don't know what it means. Um, try to communicate. Although this creature has never spoken a single word, dialogue may still be possible. I'll try talking to it. I tried some common words and phrases, but it didn't reply or react. You know, I said, hog champ, and, um, cringe, and, um, uh, I don't know, what's in the, what's, what's the memes? Uh, nano machine, son. No, um, even if I asked questions and talked about myself, I gave no indication that it understood me. I wonder if talking is even possible. However, it may not be ignoring my attempts at speech. It may not know any language at all. Even if it's not intelli as intelligent as a human, I'll keep trying to communicate again. Oh, I guess that's that. It's been a while since I picked up the strange creature, and it seems far healthier now. So far, it doesn't seem to be able to talk, and the only sound it ever makes is a high-pitched keep. It is, is it a new life form, some undiscovered race, an abandoned mutant, or even an extraterrestrial? It could be alien. All in all, I still have no idea what it is. However, if it eats obediently, doesn't raise a fuss when I clean its body, it's quiet and never causes problems even though it can now explore the room at well. My main concern is the speed that it's changing shape. It may be better call it a transformation than growth. Though I considered it bizarre and unsettling at first, as time passed, it started to look a little cute. <laughs> you know, we started to awaken something inside the protagonist. No, um... While it is still obviously grotesque, I seem to only be getting more attached. Possibly because the upper body resembles that of a human girl. I need to stop using words like it or that. Due to her insect-like features and my desire to see her transform further, I've decided to name her Agaha. Well, this is your first mistake, you know, getting attached. Uh, right there. Hmm. Now, now, will this get me banned? I don't know. It's not, she's not human, you know. But like, little kind of naked. Observe. Agia has grown steadily over the past few days. Her tentacles have grown, and the legs on her waist have grown, uh, gotten longer as well. Her previously shapeless lower half is forming into more legs. Parts of her body are still not solid or stable, but with some effort, she can now sit in places that support her back. Regardless of the way she's growing. It's clear Agaha is not human, but when I see her sitting on the sofa, it feels like she's becoming more like one. I don't know what the future holds, but I'll try to see how human she can become. Again, I don't know, because this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> you know, it's like, I saw some screenshots and it's like, look, it, it's fine. She's a, she's, a, she's a monster, you know, it's like, it's fine. There's nothing weird about this at all. Something neat. Even though she can now sit, in meal time, I let her use the chair and utensils. I let her use my gamer chair to play video games. No, uh, between the structure of her joints and the unfamiliar tool, she moves awkwardly. But if I demonstrate how to eat with the fork, she can imitate me quickly. Recently, I have been making separate meals of Akaha, and I just make more of what I eat. There's no change in reaction to the food. Whatever I serve, she eats in small amounts. I'll try foods with stronger flavors next. I pat Agatha on, uh, on the head as usual. There's no noticeable, noticeable change in her expression, but recently she has stopped staring directly at me the whole time. Did she lose interest, or come to the conclusion that I mean no harm? If we are no longer crawling the ground, it feels more like I'm petting a child than an animal. But while she doesn't seem to be bothered by physical contact, she still shows no sign that she enjoys it either. She looks at me occasionally with her unreadable insect-like eyes. She may not look a lot eyes at me when I picked her up, uh, or rather, she may not lock eyes with me like when I picked her up, but my inability to read her emotions continues to vex me. You must feel. I, I talk to Agatha often, but she still cannot speak. 
but when I call her name or announce a meal, even if she's out of the room, she will come. I think she's beginning to understand a little. She may only distinguish a small few words now, but I'm not giving up yet. Agaha continues to grow and change every day. She no longer drags her body like a slug to move around. I, think this, uh, I don't know, just an interesting, you know, imagery. Uh, as she can now use her legs and arms to move her upper body short distances. I'm worried that she's growing beyond my expectations and will probably grow like, you know, I don't know, like sword arms and then decapitate me. But as always, she remains docile and quiet. However, it's not just her physical growth that intrigues me. She not only reacts to my voice now, but her newfound interest in the TV and PC indicate a possibly growing intellect. She's gonna, you know, she's going to make a social media account and become, uh, you know, a, uh, like a YouTuber. Of course, given her lack of expression and reaction, I don't know what to, to what degree she's learning. She never misbehaves, not very active physically, and I can't really tell her what to do anyway. Or I can't really tell her what to do anyway. I can't get an idea of her intelligence just from observing things like how she eats or sleeps. Perhaps more will be revealed as Agatha continues growing. Her level of intelligence and any potential issues should become clearer as she starts moving around more freely. I stop myself as I'm putting my notebook on the shelf. Since her mobility has increased, Agatha tends to wander around the house. I see her moving fairly often now, as she occasionally picks things up and moves them. As for the notebook I keep on Agatha since finding her, it may be on a high shelf, but I can't be completely certain it's out of her reach. Aga may learn to read and write eventually, so I should figure out how to handle this. There's no sign of her entering my room uninvited. I don't think anything I wrote is bad, but I'd like to keep observing Agaha with it. After thinking about it a bit, I open my locked valuables drawer and lock the notebook inside. It may not be a sturdy lock, but I can leave other stuff in there too. And if I remember the position of the items inside, I'll know it's been opened. Okay. Hiding that notebook away from her in case she learns about it and murders us, I guess. Her once twisted little body has now become distinct legs, and they have joints she may soon stably walk with. Her face is looking more human, but her right eye is ripping open wider. But soon she has grown more tentacles, I can't really say that she's becoming, uh, she's becoming human. This also means an increase in dexterity, and she can imitate more and more human actions. Although I'm wary, I would like to see Agatha's potential. Make it grow and evolve like a Pokemon. I've started including foods of harsh and bitter flavors, but as usual, she shows no reaction to her food. One thing I've noticed since I've started this is that Agatha will not eat until after I start. I have to say, itadakimasu before we start eating. At first, I thought she might need an example to copy, but she handles spoons and forks fine now. Nevertheless, she always waits for me to start before eating. Maybe she only ate it because I did, or perhaps she wants me to eat first to show if it's poisonous. Pet. Well, even though it's clear by now that I mean no harm, she doesn't seem to be relaxing. Since she now looks around occasionally when I pet her, I feel I'm getting a vague idea of her mood. However, since she has, still has no distinct facial expressions to read, I may only be seeing what I want to see. Well, that is true, I mentioned that before. So far, her only vocalization is a rare high-pitched key sound when carried. This is the only reason this communication is so difficult. She doesn't laugh or cry like a person, or whine like a pet. Like an insect, she's difficult to read. As she becomes more human, I hope her vocal cords are evolving too. But just like before, she can only make the same key sound. Maybe for now, I should start focusing on non-vocal forms of communication. You know, it really is like taking care of like a spider, you know? You're literally just taking care of a spider girl. Looks like fun. She's grow slowly growing like spider legs. Uh, Agatha's continued growth astounds me. Her ability to handle tools is beyond that of an animal. She becomes more like a human all the time. Even though she still never tries to communicate, considering what I've learned, my way of handling Agatha has become more like childcare or teaching than raising a pet. When watching TV and movies, she has shown an aversion to violent scenes, and she has shown a preference for comedic and romantic scenes, observing them intently. I, she likes rom-coms. I wonder if she'll come to understand me, but I also worry that she might evolve behind my comprehension. 
It's possible that she'll become either a beautiful butterfly or a poisonous moth. And no matter how she changes, my affection will increase all the same. Dave. Hmm, okay. Def definitely growing. Uh, although parts of Akiha's body are transforming in bizarre ways, the rest of her body is definitely becoming more human. I never thought she'd become so human when I met her. But as I started seeing her more as a person than a creature, there are certain issues I can no longer ignore. The Bricotta, her body is becoming not just human but feminine as well. Hmm. She needs to start wearing clothes or I'm going to get banned on, on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, well, my eyes will wander. I can't just leave her naked for the time being. So I'll give her something in temporary. But since her limbs are shaped differently, I don't know how well female clothes will fit her. Because she's still changing, I'll just try one of my shirts for now. Oop. Okay. Alright, good. Let's give her a shirt. Also, <laughs> I guess little custom holes over there. Yeah, but yeah, she's only, she's only got one arm. At least one human arm. She has little tentacles on the other arm. Um, she didn't re resist my attempt to clove her, but she's still not used to wearing anything. I tend to find her staring at the fabric. You know, it's kind of like when you... You know, it's kind of like when you try to put clothes on like a dog or a cat or something, you know? I feel like... Isn't it like overkill, you know? Unless it's like really cold. Like blizzard cold. Like, you shouldn't really do that because... Um, they're gonna overheat. They already have fur, you know? But, well, she doesn't have fur. Anyway. Uh, sometimes she strips when I'm not looking, so I don't think she likes it. Maybe I should have started clothing her before. I kind of regret not uh, uh, acclimating her to the idea of clothes by now. Have some food. Wow. Toast and soup. I made as many kinds of food as I could. Fruits, vegetables, meat. Fish, hard food, soft food, spicy, bitter, and sweet. I tried many dishes with the idea of finding her likes and dislikes, but Akiha never reacted any differently. She likely has no sense of taste. Since she has no issues with anything I give her, no matter how unpleasant, I have decided to stop that experiment. It's clear that as far as food goes, she has no preference. Also, even though she's bigger now, the amount she eats is the same. It seems she's satisfied with her current, propor uh, our current proportions, though, her current portions, and she only needs to eat once a day. Convenient, you know. <laughs> Maybe she needs less energy than a human, or she might digest food more efficiently. But I appreciate how little impact she has on my expenses. You know, what do I even do as like a day job? You know, am I on vacation? Again, I'm spending all the time taking care of her. You know, I'm on, uh, <laughs> you know, maternal leave. No, um, skinship. Dressing her up made her look more human, but her lack of reactions to my touch emphasized how unhuman Agaha is. Although still eerie, she looks more human by the day. Agaha's many changes will probably put weird thoughts in my head, so I'm relieved that her inhuman nature is still obvious. Hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. I think Agaha can still learn human language in the future, but she still can't speak at all. It may take time to teach her how to write, but I try giving her a pen. Aga imitates my movement properly as I draw a line in front of her. But if I try letters, she only vaguely mimics them. I don't think she understands yet. I wasn't expecting her to write instantly. She can handle dishes and silverware, so this is fine for now. She definitely has the dexterity to learn writing. Aga is significantly larger than when I found her. She may be too tall for the sofa she's been using due to her growing legs. Luckily, there's plenty of space in the living room, so... I bought a mattress and pillow for Agaha to use. Agaha showed no emo emotional reaction as usual and started using the new bed. Though she's always been unreactive and unreadable, as she becomes more human, I feel a little lonely. It was important to make her wear clothes, but now Agaha resembles a human even more than before. Her appearance now gives off the impression of a carefree child. However, I shouldn't confuse her for a person as I still know very little about Agaha or her biological traits. She may superficially resemble a human now, but that doesn't mean she possesses a human mind. That said, even though I think I should be careful not to assume Agatha's true nature, I can't help but want to develop a human heart within her. Whether it's a, it's a fear that she'd become a terrifying monster, or the hope that I could one day love her like my own child, I really have no idea. Honestly, it's probably a little bit of broth. Uh, I guess I'll... I'll overwrite the save that the game came with, I guess. Aha! 
this is not my save. Also, she's she's browsing the internet. She really, you know, is becoming a gamer. When I got home today, Aga was using my computer. Checking the history only indicates that she was clicking randomly. She may just be treating it like a toy, but this means she can use a mouse. If she keeps using it in the future and learns more as she does, this could be a major clue as to how intelligent she really is. You know, she becomes a, a, like a troll. She becomes like a common troll on forums. Lala, you got trolled. Uh, recently, it seems like Agatha has become more expressive. I can see traces of surprise or wonder. She started making light facial expressions. Although they are far more faint than those of a normal human, it's a major improvement over her previous unreactive state. With her complete lack of expression in the past, I would always have trouble understanding her. But she becomes better at expressing herself. I'll be able to learn more about her. Eat. No. I slept in today and when I left my room for I left my room or oh I slept in today and when I left my room, breakfast had already been made. Wow. It seems like I kinda cooked it herself. Also her, her eyes you know, definitely are increasing there. Uh, it's all stuff I've made before, so I got probably imitated it from watching me cook. Though it was honestly a little bland, it was probably cooked and no problem eating it. With her usual lack of reaction to flavor, she calmly eats it like before. She likely still has no sense of taste, but now it seems that Agatha understands how to cook, has learned how to use her utensils and fire. <laughs> you know, he's fire. Lately, with how independent she is, I rarely need to do anything for her, so I'm not very surprised. You know, imagine like having a pet that just become independent and you, can, you don't have to do anything, and you, you know, and then they could just take care of themselves. I mean, I, I guess that's just having a kid. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, had her head again. When I was sitting on the couch relaxing today, Aka suddenly cuddled up against me. Physical contact between us is not uncommon, but this time it felt different. Blush. Sitting right next to me, she linked her arm with mine and pressed up against me. When I turned to her in surprise, she made eye contact and softly smiled. Compared to our more pet and owner like skinship in the past, what Akaha did this time felt human, even feminine, and was very charming. It was a small thing compared to all the two changes until now, but the effect it had on me was enormous. As a surprise confusion ran through my mind, I sat there lost in Akaha's sweet smile. And this is when she eats her face. Because, you know, she's plotting to kill you. Now, uh, communicate. Even though Akaha is usually remarkably well behaved, her lack of direct communication is getting frustrating. I tried teaching her how to use a pen or type on a keyboard, but I still can't seem to get her to use any kind of words herself. This would be normal for a dog or a cat, but Agaha is clearly, clearly more intelligent. Only my attempts to use language to communicate fail, almost as she's faking her inability. That said, there's no sign that she could understand me before, so it's still within the realm of possibility. I'm probably just making selfish assumptions in my frustration. I still have no way of knowing for sure. Don't, don't be so mean to your, Eld, you know, eldritch monster girl daughter thing. Um, I still can't read Aika's thoughts and emotions well, but her, recently, she's become more expressive. She now smiles when I pat her head, and frowns a little when I ignore her. When I think about it, she spends a lot of time either observing me or the people on TV. The recent changes in Aika's behavior indicate that she might be trying to imitate humans. As obviously inhuman as she is, it seems like she's losing some of her more unusual features and becoming more human. And while she shows more emotion now, it feels less like a natural change and more like a deliberate one. This is only speculation and conjecture for now since I still don't know for sure if she wants to be human or has a completely different goal in mind. Though I'm happy that Aga has become more expressive, I'm worried that she might evolve beyond, beyond my comprehension, beyond my, you know, my human imagination to the point where she becomes, you know, one of the one of the ancient ones and destroys my sanity. Um, only time will tell how she develops her newly apparent emotions. I'm trying to blend into human society to make it easier to capture humans and eat them alive. So, um, observe. Well, wearing clothes has made it more difficult to see Agatha's throw. Uh, throw? <laughs> Why am I saying throw? Uh, it's more difficult to see Agatha's growth, but recently her body hasn't been changing much. Instead, her behaviors changed a lot, especially her expressions. 
Ageha has started actively seeking intimate skinship, which is starting to trouble me. <laughs> Until recently, I saw Ageha as a pet or a specimen, but she suddenly became a pretty girl. No, this is like, this, what does that mean? It's like, this is why I hate video games. It appeals to the male fantasy of raising like a monster girl. But anyway, um, since I still can't get a read on Akiha's perspective on this, there's no way to know for sure. I can only learn more if I find, a, if we find a direct way to communicate. So I want to figure that out as soon as possible. Lunchtime. Ageha has started cooking more often now. Lately, I've been eating her food every day. Sometimes the taste is good, and sometimes it's weird. Since I don't tend to want her in the kitchen as she cooks, maybe she's learning through trial and error. Ageha only cooks, I've, uh, only cooks things I've made before, so she's probably trying to imitate me. Since I'm not really a good cook myself, it's reason uh, reasonable to assume that she wouldn't be either. But since she almost never makes the food truly awful, I'm grateful that she's willing to cook. That's nice. I mean, you know, again, it appeals to the male fantasy. It's like, raising an elder abomination to become my wife. You know, it's like, um. <laughs> Basically, what this is. You know, in a way, it's kind of like grooming. But like, you know, it's different. Because she's not, she's not a person. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, um, whenever Aka's nearby, she now gets very cuddly and clingy. She won't understand it even if I told her to stop. For the first time, it's a genuine problem that Agaha doesn't do as I say. Although it's not like I ever understood her anyway. Until now, Agaha was quiet and well behaved. But since I didn't establish boundaries before, I realized that I can't really control her actions now. I can't get her to nod or shake her head in response to what I say, but she no longer stares blankly when I talk. Now she just smiles at me. Creepily. She gives off a very different impression now, but her lack of reaction is still the same. Agaha has changed in many ways, but I've still made no progress in trying to communicate. The days go by. Agaha's suddenly forward affection is a major change from previously unresponsive self. I wonder if this is because I showed her too many shows and movies depicting romance, and not enough other genres, you know, such as... Um, action and um, horror and um, I, don't, I don't know what other genres are drama uh, if I were being optimistic I would welcome these changes as she sh shows favorable new traits but given how sudden and swift the changes were I instead feel wary and confused about what her true intentions are what are they what's she trying to do is she trying to grasp my mood experiment to see my reactions or something else entirely even if I try to compare her to animals or humans this shift was too abrupt for me to know for sure. That said, I can't deny that I enjoy her affections and seeing such a pretty smile on Akaha's face. However, I also feel very uneasy about it at the same time. Hmm, interesting. So, there's a choice here. And I'm going to break the UI again to actually make a manual save that you're not supposed to do, by the way. Um, You know, maybe we shouldn't trust this. I mean, you know, you know how she looks. She has like weird tentacle things and like insect parts. You know, it's like it might be possible that she's just simply trying to imitate a human being, but not really be actually human. She just looks like it, and she's just trying to kill me. So, let's be wary. Well, Agaha is obviously inhuman. If I leave things as they are, it may be too late to do anything about it if something does happen. I should try to keep my distance and avoid skinship for now. Alright. Um, yeah, I'll save. Agaha is gone. When I went to the living room, there was nobody there, and the front door was unlocked. It seems she left while I was asleep. If she was that interested in leaving, she could have given me some kind of sign. I should have been more careful. She no longer crawls like an animal anymore. For a more human body, she would have little trouble getting around. I ran around the neighborhood looking for her. She's been gone for several days. I haven't heard about any unusual sightings either. Akiha's probably not coming back. She didn't leave anything behind, but she did take one thing. I've been taking pictures to do document Akiha's changes, but the camera's memory card was missing. She was clearly more intelligent than I thought. Since I thought nobody else would see it, I never bothered to back up the data on the card. 
there's now no evidence that Agatha was ever here. So look, anyone believe me anyway. If I throw away the notebook, I might come to believe that this was just all a dream. But if Agatha wanted to leave, I had no reason to stop her. I wasn't raising her with some purpose or desire. I just picked her up on a whim. Even so, I'm, I'm sure she'll be okay. Game over. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't like us, so I guess she just simply left. I mean, I hope she's safe, you know, because she has freaking, t you know, insect limbs sticking out of her, and her eye looks weird, you know, I don't know if she's gonna get gunned down by the, like, I don't know, like, the government, you know? Um, anyway, how about we don't suddenly give her the cold shoulder? Let's, let's see how things go. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing. So I'll leave things as they are and see what Agatha does next. She is now, you know, she's now browsing Amazon. You know, she's gonna subscribe to Amazon Prime and buy all of the things. Uh, one day, Agatha was playing with the computer, or was she? She got my attention to show me a page in a mail order site. Maybe she wants me to buy something. While considering whether to actually purchase it. I go ahead and add it to the car for her. And then Aka starts browsing related items, looking at a multitude of different pages. He doesn't know how to differ differentiate between, you know, the, the, the items with really bad reviews. And she ends up buying, like, you know, knockoff, uh, knockoff uh, uh, products from China. And then they arrives, and it's just really bad. Um, she stops at another item and gives me the same look as before. After repeating the cycle a few times, several pieces of clothing and fabric pile up in the site's cart. She seems satisfied with this and lets me use a chair and mouse. The extra fabric all matches up with the clothing. If Agatha were to receive all this, she may start wearing more clothes. Maybe she just liked looking at the pictures. I do have to clothe her properly anyway, and Agatha is growing much more slowly now. The total price is not cheap at all, but still a reasonable amount. Since Agatha eats only a little, she's barely increased my expenses, it even helps with the cooking gonna cost a pretty penny but it's within my budget so i decided to finish placing the order i need to buy clothes for monster girl daughter uh, but after a few days everything i ordered arrives i unpack it all and give it to akaha i wonder how well she can wear it with no modification but as i'm thinking about that akaha brings out a sewing kit i can't sew myself but i never threw it out she must have found it collecting dust on her shelf i didn't expect her to be able to sew at all just knows how to do it. Despite that, Aga opens the sewing kit and starts working. It looks like she won't need any help from me. She's using her other limbs. Um, Aga starts off slowly working with the tools, but she handles them deftly with no issue. Since it seems that she'll be here for a while now, I'll leave her to her own devices. Aga's recent behavior is unsettling, but this time away is a breath of fresh air. Since rejecting contact with her will affect her mood, I'm glad she now has something to keep her interest. Now I'm completely certain about it. Akiha's intelligence is at least on the level of a human. She understands clothing, can use a computer, can plan in advance, can learn how to sew, and has the skill and knowledge to properly do it. She's shown greater intellect than a human child. She's obviously intelligent enough, so her continued inability to communicate feels unnatural. I don't know if she can communicate or refuses to, she should be able to at least convey something. She's too busy sewing for me to try at the moment, so I'll try again after she's done. Even if she still doesn't respond, I like to keep trying. The next day I left my room, and there you go, it's freaking, freaking uh, gothic lolita. Uh, I saw Aga wearing new clothes. Looks like she's finished her modification. I mean, I guess she looks more human now. You know, she's covering her up her like weird L alien eyes, I guess. You still see a little bit over there. Um, but yeah, she leaves her modifications. Even though she was working skillfully before, I was still surprised at how well it turned out. Her, her inhuman parts are hidden enough that she can pass as a girl. It's a bit conspicuous, but there are fashions like that out there. She looks mostly human now. She might be able to go outside like this. I'm impressed. Suddenly, Akeha points to the entrance. It seems she really intends to go outside dressed like this. I figured she would want to leave the house at some point, but I wasn't expecting it to be so soon. Did she figure out that I have nothing planned today? 
Eventually, I decided to go out with Agaha for a while. Probably don't have to worry about her running off or scaring anyone. I can be optimistic about this trip with Agaha. I shouldn't get too worked up, but I doubt that will stop soon. Uh, we're only going to see the neighborhood, so don't make a scene. Agaha's only response is a knowing smile. Only a few days ago, she kept her intelligence hidden, but she still won't even nod or shake her head to reply. I'll interpret her smile as a yes for now, but I need something more clear. Either way, it should be fine for now. I'm worried, but I open the front door and leave Agaha. Okay. You know, she does have a bit of a tentacle arm there. You know, I wonder if anyone will notice that. And, and her hands over here also look like weird. Very um, bony, I guess. Very bony or like doll alike. I don't know. As soon as we left the house, she took my arm and started walking. You know, you know. Let's just pretend it's um, it's an early Halloween costume. You know, <laughs> that's all, right? Uh, since the first time outside, we uh, since we met, and leaning on me makes her four-legged walking look more natural. I have no reason to stop her this time. She's wearing a cute dress, and her inhuman parts are hidden from view. My sense of reason and morality fights it, but I'm seeing her as a girl now. My heart rate is increasing from this unusual tension. Doki Doki. Luckily, it's early and there are a few people around, and nobody who sees Agaha shows any suspicion. After walking a bit, Agaha and I stop at a nearby park and sit on a bench. I'll let Agaha see the view and then head back home. I keep saying Agaha. Agaha, Agaha, Agaha. I feel like it's got a bit of a tongue twister. Agaha? Is it Agaha? 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 Agaha. Agaha. But uh, not much time has passed since we left, but between Agaha's actions and my nervousness taking her outside, my heart is pounding. I turn toward Agaha to check how she's doing, and see her reaching towards me, bringing her face closer. I don't know what Agaha is doing, so I let her continue. Her face is very close, and I only realize, I realize what she's doing a, a bit too late. I raise my arm to stop her, but we're out in public, just shoving her away to draw attention. Think about what to do, I stop moving. I was, I was still for just a small moment, but that moment was long enough for her lips to meet mine. Smooch. Okay. And this is when things go wrong. <laughs> um, well, I didn't try anything after that. When I suggested going home and stood up, she followed me obediently. I don't know if it's an imitation born of curiosity, or if she even has a concept of love, but this behavior makes it clear that she sees me as a man. This femininity I saw in Aka was intentional. I'm still upset by what happened, and it's clouding my mind. You know, it's weird. Sorry, Aka, I'm, I'm actually gay. No, I'm um, no. I wonder if this was Aka's plan all along. Maybe as I understand more about her, I can come to an answer. I need to get my thoughts together. Oh, eat. Aka's cooking has improved. In taste and presentation, it surpasses my own. Sometimes tastes odd, though I was never a good cook myself, but I don't get it. She may be adding some kind of special ingredient. <laughs> it, it might be venom. <laughs> or she could be trying to make the food unique to her. Maybe she's learning how to cook more than just what she's watching me to make. I thought Aga had no sense of taste, but was I wrong? Maybe she did, but never showed on her face. Whether her cooking skill increased without a sense of taste, I have no idea. I shouldn't think about it too hard. This is a trivial matter compared to her excessive skinship. I don't need to worry about that while I'm eating, though. I think I, I thank Agaha for the meal and keep eating. I don't know if she understood, but she softly smiled in response. As I figure out how to accept Agaha's new behavior, her constant skinship troubles me. This, this is very troubling. I pretend to be hard at work and reduce my contact with her. If I let her cuddle with me and get affectionate, she might try something like what she did at the park again. And that'd be weird. Agaha seems quite dissatisfied with the distance I'm keeping between us. When I avoid her, a bored frown appears on her face. When I see it, the guilt stabs at my heart and makes me want to return to her side. But I decide this is the safer option and force myself to look away. It feels like Agaha can communicate without using language, so there should be other ways I can try. I read some materials that might help with that. Pet training, children's education, communication with foreign cultures. I even read texts on psychology and mental disorders. I feel myself getting impatient of Agaha, but she doesn't need to know that. 
even if I try various kinds of basic yes or no questions, she still gives no indication that she understands. Maybe it's not that she has nothing to say, but instead she doesn't feel like telling me anything. Akiha is neither human nor animal, a unique existence. It's possible that her mental structure doesn't even allow for language. But since I'm an amateur in this subject, not willing to use extreme methods, I have to settle for that answer. She simply is there. He doesn't speak. What should I do now? Should I accept Agha's new behavior? She's changed so much in such a short time. She hasn't made a move on me since. But if she does, we should stop at just a, a k -k 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 kiss? Kisu? I, no. I don't know if I can control Agha's behavior. I even tried restraining her, kicking her out, or getting violent to stop her. And I don't know how she would react if I tried. I'm afraid that I might not even be able to. No. What I fear isn't the risk of the unknown. It's possible that Agatha will get angry and cause trouble, but I'm not too worried about that. I just don't want Agatha to hate me. Save. Normally when it's time to sleep, Agatha quietly goes to bed on her own. But tonight she came into my room. Thinking about her recent excessive skinship, I warily face her. You know, why, why, why has she been watching? What kind of shows has she been watching? That's all I gotta say. She gives no indication that she notices my worry and sits next to me on the bed with no hesitation. Before I can say anything, Agatha wraps a tentacle around my neck <laughs> and slowly pulls me toward her. Thinking she was trying the same thing as before, I grab Agatha by the shoulder and stop her. Even if she doesn't understand me, I tell her firmly to stop doing these things. You have to get consent first. When I say this, Agatha's face quickly shifts expressions. Anger, sadness, surprise. I'm not sure what I see in her face now. I don't know how she feels. After a few seconds, Agatha narrows her eyes, but I still can't tell what she's thinking. Suddenly, I feel a light pain in my neck where her tentacle is touching me. Oh no. <laughs> I touch the part where I felt it. But there's no blood and the pain quickly recedes. It didn't hurt very much, but it hurt enough that I was sure I didn't imagine it. In my puzzled confusion, I look at her and see her smiling gently. She pulls me toward her just like before. I put my hand on her shoulder to push her away, but I no longer have any power in my limbs. Just putting my hand on Akia's shoulder can't stop her. She kisses me like she did before. Um, did we raise <laughs> a yendere? I don't know. But not like before, she doesn't stop at a light kiss. She keeps going until I have to take several breaths with my nose. She lightly pushes against me, and my weakened body falls to the bed, too powerless to resist. She literally paralyzed me. She can do that? She lays across my front and she keeps kissing me. Her long tongue slithers between my lips. Hmm. Multiple tentacle-like tongues core around my tongue, run across my teeth and lick my inner cheeks and slowly invade my throat. I wonder how that feels. That sounds, that sounds uncomfortable. I keep trying to push Agaha away, but my arms have no strength. I can't resist her in any way. She steals my breath away slowly and steadily. And all I can do is accept this passionate kiss beyond what any human could ever do. Actually, despite my deep paralysis, my body has become extremely sensitive. Agatha's warmth, her rough tongues, her shallow breaths, the wet sound of her saliva, the echo through my mind destroying my will to resist. How much time has passed? It may have been two, three, or even ten minutes. Although I don't know for how long my consciousness faded away, eventually Agatha slowly releases my lips. As I wondered what she would do next, Agatha stared at me for a while. She smiled, kissed me gently, and left the room. Well, that was weird. The paralysis slowly wore off, and I regained focus on my body and managed to sit up. You know what you did, Agatha? It's called a crime? You know, this is a crime, Agatha. We didn't teach her about criminal... You know, we didn't teach her about, like, you know, what, what, um, what the law is. <laughs> but anyway, after confirming that my body is back to normal, I clutched my head in terror. I thought she might be, be potentially dangerous before, but since Agha had a physique of a girl, I, I was confident I could fight her off if I needed to. She's definitely far more dangerous than I thought. But honestly, this doesn't change anything. I just have to be more careful in the future. Although I don't know when she'll try something again, I should not try. I should try not to upset her for now. You know who's the pet and who's the master now. <laughs> I tremble with fear, thinking of that deep, sweet kiss etched into my mind. Thought of maybe I should accept her suddenly returns. This dangerous, mysterious thought somehow only grows stronger. 
Rather than fearing the odd being known as Agaha, I'm afraid of myself wanting her even more. Hmm. Tag. My, uh, mind break. No, um. When Agaha stung me, I lost all movement in my body. Her venom is strong and fast acting, but luckily temporary. It leaves no scar or noticeable after effects to my health. It also seemed to increase my sensitivity when she kissed me. Although the venom only affected me for a short time, what Akaha did to me remains clear in my mind when I see her. I can't decide on where to go from here. I'm organizing my thoughts and trying to see how I can move forward, but I don't know what I should do now. What is it that I really truly want? All we can do is save the game. Still stuck in my current state of worry, I stay in my bedroom. Akaha comes back in and approaches me. You know, you know how I said this game was wholesome? You know, it's starting, it's starting to be less wholesome now. It's, it's a, little bit, a little bit creepy. It becomes more, it's coming more like a horror game now. I like before she reaches out to me. Okay, so we can save her. Or at least I'm going to save anyway. Um, yeah, there you go. Do we accept her hand or do we avoid her hand? Well, obviously hand holding is lewd. You can't do that. I avoid. If she's using Venom, I just have to let her not touch me. Knowing this, I don't need to be subtle about it. I pull away from her, avoiding the tentacle reaching toward me. A bored expression crosses Akaha's face, but she stops there. I stand up, away from her, and she unexpectedly leaves the room as if giving up. Eventually, I hear some noise from the kitchen, so she's probably making food. I don't know where to go from here, but for now I log this in the notebook. I shut the door, open the locked door like always, and pull it out. As I figure out how to get my thoughts on paper, I suddenly notice something amiss. Two lonely words written in red ink catches my eye. I didn't write these. The only one who could have is Agaha. I intended to use his notebook to document Agaha's growth. I'd never shown it to her or left it where it could be seen. I even locked it up and when I pulled it out, I always made sure, I always made sure everything was where I left it. I should have paid closer attention. If I were more careful about ensuring that Agaha wasn't in here, I would notice that she did something. But Agaha saw what she wanted to and touched what she wanted to. It's not like she had anything to hide. From the time I found her to today, she acted in a relatively consistent manner. If the shelf was forced open, or if the lock was broken, it would have made more sense. But this was so subtle. Agaha must have opened it before without me knowing. But why write like this? If she could write, why has she never done so before? Why? Why? Questions pop in my head one after another, and one in particular makes my heart skip a beat. Then, since when? The last time I opened the notebook was yesterday, and I've been home the whole time since then. In the limited time, I would have had to search my room, finding my notes and adding her own writing while I'm not looking it would be very difficult to do so neatly. But the day she first saw my notes was probably long before writing in them. She knew about the notes and where they were hidden already, and when I was asleep or bathing, it would easily be possible. The message just writing in my private notebook tells me is that I've been aware of it for a while. If so, then Agaha should have known already, known just how much her behavior was affecting me. Panic takes over my mind. I look down. I look down. I look, bleh, I look back down at those words. I'm so panicked I can't even speak. A clear answer to my questions is written in my language. I'm not just imagining it. Seeing those words, I'm terrified. Oh no. I feel a deep, overwhelming terror. I don't understand what Agha is doing to me. I can never understand her. She's tearing up my heart with her constant mischief, and I can't stay calm. So I'm going to leave the house and stay at a hotel. I need to get away from Agha as soon as I can. If I think about it calmly, I can rely on the police for this. I must find a way to be safe from her. With a Glock, you know? With a Glock pistol, I can't leave a decent. I can't live a decent life with her around. Time to go for a walk. I can't let Aka get suspicious, so I don't pack anything for an overnight stay. I just put my wallet in my pocket and open the door. Aka is standing right in front of the door, like she was waiting for me. I try to keep a smile on my face, but the only emotion I feel now is fear. I act as natural as I can, not too cheerful and not too serious. I want to cool my head for a bit, so I'm going for a walk, I say, as I pass Agaha by. She calmly stands out of the way. 
But as I pass Agatha to leave, I feel something touch my neck. <laughs> and yet again, I feel a light pain. As everything starts going black, I see a different expression than usual on Agatha's face. A sad look. Or maybe shock. I woke up on my bed. How long was I out? Looking at the clock, it seems only a short time has passed. Less than an hour? Even so, I feel refreshed. All the anxiety, terror, and stress I've been feeling. It's like it all floated away. Suddenly, the door opens and I see Agatha come in. As soon as I see her, the events of the past few hours flash through my mind. Why does it matter? I know that Agatha's dangerous, but could I just be overthinking things? She's definitely at least as intelligent as a human. So if she intended to kill or eat me, it would be obvious at this point. If she meant me harm, I would surely be dead by now. Even though I acted the way I did earlier, Agatha seems to have made food and has a bowl in her hand. As soon as I saw Agatha's face, all my worries and troubles flew away. I instead feel guilty for stifling the love in my heart. I'm still a little worried that I can't understand her, but the emotions that Agatha shows aren't very different from those of a person. The charming attraction I feel no longer scares me. I can't bring myself to reject her now. Why would I do that to Agatha? She sits next to me and offers the food. I take it gratefully. I whisper my words of love to her. Agatha is as silent as usual, but she responds with a beautiful smile. I spend a long time staring straight at her, at, at her face, seeing her expression. Her love for her, or her love for me, floods in. As I think, or I can't, I keep messing with words. You know, she's injected some kind of weird poison. Or some kind of weird venom, you know, it's, it's, it's affecting my ability to read. You know, as I eat, I think about the words written in my notebook and consider the meaning of those words. From now on, I decide to do my best for Agatha. Agatha is still as mysterious as ever, but now I'm committed to her. She's injected the simp syndrome. You know, or the, 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 the simp, uh, like, like formula, you know, into my brain. Uh, if my love is what Agatha wants for me, then I will give her the love she wants. Happy and... Is it? Happy? I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know if this is happy. Oh well. Okay. <laughs> well, more like Yandere ending. Uh, sure. Let's accept her hand. Resistance is futile. You know, just like in Star Trek. If I accept her, everything should be fine. With that excuse in my mind, I allow Agatha to kiss me again. I was paralyzed and collapsed last time, but this time I lean into her. Pressing against her, hugging Agatha tightly, I warmly embrace her. As we lock lips over and over, Agatha's long tongue slides into my mouth like before. Her rough tongue, her hot breath, the warmth of her body. My thoughts are overrun with the stimulation of her tongues as I clutch her in my arms. Suddenly my breath hitches. I pull my arms away and Agatha slowly lays down. Unlike last time when she was on top of me, I see Agatha reaching towards me from below. Um, this is not you know, 18 plus, right? As far as I know. Uh, this is between us shrinks as I let her pull me in. And we started heatedly kissing. You know, it's just making out. You know, that's all. It's totally PG-13 just kissing. That's all. Uh, deeply, hotly, intensely, I taste Agatha. The wet sound of saliva and breath echoes with the room. You know, it's so loud. You know, it... Ca ca catches the attention of our neighbor. Keep it down, you two. Uh, Agatha's breathing gets rougher and her cheeks start to flush. Hmm. Wearing a bra, by the way? I guess she bought that from Amazon. Uh, when I break off the kiss to catch my breath, Agatha starts to unbutton her clothes. What are we about to do? That stark thought calms me down and makes me hesitate. I feel bad about stopping here, but I try pulling away only to be stopped by Agatha's clinging embrace. While trying to figure out what to do next, I see a familiar pain in my neck. Although I manage to sit back up, my body soon becomes weak again. And within a few seconds, I can barely move at all. This time, I quickly start regaining my ability to move as Agatha stands up. It looks like I won't be paralyzed like before. Instead, I feel a different sensation overwhelming me. My breath speeds up, and as if I'm suddenly drunk, an intense heat spreads through me. Um, uh, My sensitivity rises like adrenaline is pumping through me. I try to calm down, but my heart is pounding faster and faster. I clutch my chest and look down, only to see that I'm popping a tent in my pants. Okay, is this... Hopefully this is not... 
explicit. Anyway, I look back up there, hearing a, a light rustling sound. I see Aga's clothes falling to the floor. Hmm. Okay, now this I think I need to censor. Anyway, when I look up, Aga has finished stripping and starts coming closer. I haven't seen Aga nude in a while. Her purple twisted in human parts don't deter me now. Feminine curves. Full swollen breasts. Okay, well, um, I think this is 15 plus as far as I know. Unless there's some kind of like patch that adds, you know, the, the game that I download, I think there's no age content. Anyway, um, glossy pale skin, beautiful naked body that fills in the brim passion as in my sight. And shreds the last scrap of reason left in me. I throw off my clothes in a rush and push Edgar down into the bed. And then, black screen. Ugh. I was scared. You know, I was I was genuinely scared. You know, I mean, I got I think I got a, a sense for that. You know, show the nipples. You know? like, obviously, that's 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 horrible. You know, you can show people getting decapitated. You know, all the time on YouTube, but like you can't you can't show a nipple. It's horrible. That's like that will like uh, you know corrupt your mind. Um, how long were we at it? Uh, I look out the window. See, that's already dark outside. Our desires sated. Aga and I lay in bed on our sides, panting tiredly. This was the first time I had ever felt such passion. As if I'd become a beast. This is also kind of, isn't this also illegal? I think he, like, rubbed us? <laughs> anyway, I don't get a lot of exercise, so I'll probably be sore tomorrow. However, in my fatigue, I felt very comfortable. Probably a good thing that I let these pent-up desires out all at once. After a cool down, I raised my heavy body and check on Aga. Stop showing her nipples. Um, I don't think I see anything down. Anyway, um, she seems quite calm. She opens her eyes and stares back at me. A normal girlfriend would probably be upset about how rough and feral I just was. Despite that, Aga gives me the same gentle, knowing smile as usual. After a few minutes, Aga puts her clothes on and leaves the room. Eventually, I hear some noise from the kitchen, so she's probably making food. I don't know where to go from here, but for now, I log this in the notebook. I shut the door. Open the locked door like always and pull it out. You know, again, as far as I know, it's it said it was like I think 15 plus. I don't know. I just hope I don't get banned. Okay. I'm gonna have to like delete this from the Twitch boss. I don't know. Anyway, um, as I'm figuring out how to get my thoughts on paper, I suddenly notice something amiss. Ah oh, yes, see this message. Two lonely words written in red ink catch my eye. Uh, let's see. Well, you know. I guess we'll just simply accept her love. I still can't truly understand Aga's thoughts and actions. But this time, she answered me clearly. She always refused to communicate until now, but she used words to tell me something for the first time ever. Even though my mind reels with uncertainties and unpleasant scenarios, I'm tired of agonizing... Uh, I'm, I'm tired of agonizing over all... Bleh. I'm tired of agonizing over... over, over I'm tired of agonizing over all of this. I feel like. Uh, Aka already has me wrapped in her web, and I can't resist her. Even though Aka threatens me, I push those thoughts aside. Now I just regret having kept my distance before now. I drop my notebook at the desk and open the door. Then I see Aka approaching me from the kitchen. Something smells good. She probably finished cooking and came to get me. When I approach and stroke her cheek, Aka looks at me cutely. I whisper, uh, whisper my words of love to her. Maybe Aka has, has me in the palm of her hand. So these words shouldn't surprise her. But she still seems happy and satisfied to hear me. Akaka's sweet smile is beautiful and dazzling. We embrace in a soft hug, and I decide to do my best for Akaha. My previous moral concerns no longer bother me. Akaha is still as mysterious as ever, but now I'm committed to her. If my love is what Akaha wants from me, then I will give her the love she wants. Okay. I, I guess this is a good happy ending. You know, there's the other happy ending that doesn't seem so good. <laughs> But this is the actual happy ending. Um, now you wonder what the power dynamic is like, you know? I mean, I mentioned how this is kind of like grooming in a way, you know? But obviously she's not human, so it's like, how, how, would you how would you even define this? But also she actually is the one in control, you know? She's, our positions have reversed, you know? Who's the pet now? Who is actually the pet? Anyway. I guess that's it. Alright, there you go. You know. 
Um, but alright, I, I think that's it. You know, I think I've explored the game as much as I can. It's mostly linear, but there's a few choices you can make to get some add-ins, I guess. Oh uh, yeah, that was interesting. You know, interesting premise. I mean, uh, obviously her art is cute and creepy, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's interesting because of that. Um, mostly wholesome, though it gets kind of creepy at the end, <laughs> you know, kind of a little bit, you know, uh, uh, disturbing and uncomfortable near the end that I feel like, I don't know. Um, and obviously there's that part where I think I really got a sense for a new body. You know, I, I said before how like, technically she's not a human, so it's fine, right? But then she actually became way more human. And then now, I don't know, I didn't know her like naked body would show up. So I, I, I gotta, I, I definitely gotta put, a, I don't know, put some kind of giant box that covers that part. I don't know. Look, I just don't want to get banned, okay? You can't show that on YouTube. Um, anyway. Yeah, I mean, overall, yeah, interesting little story. Um, definitely has a bit of like, uh, definitely like a horror vibe to it, you know? I, I wasn't sure if it was horror or not. I mean, it seemed like horror, uh, just from the, you know, screenshots and everything. But I, I you know, I, I thought it was mostly going to just be about raising a daughter, you know? But, you know, obviously the daughter became like her eldritch, you know, girlfriend, I guess. That's how it turned out anyway. Um, oh well. Um, but yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I always say like, you know, if this was just a, you know, if this was, I mean, for one, it'd be legal, <laughs> but like, I was going to say if, if the character was just simply a human girl, you know, um, it would just be like straight romance, I guess. And that's not very interesting. But the fact that she's like a monster, you know, definitely adds a bit spice to it, I feel like. And that's why I got interested in checking it out. Um, yeah, pretty short. Uh... But it was pretty, pretty interesting, you know? I, I like the journal vibe. I just wish it didn't have, like... I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 it said there's, there was no H scenes. I mean, the, technically there wasn't. It's just, you know... It got a little too lewd there at the end there. I feel like I was reading literally, like... You know, this, those trashy, like, erotic novels, you know? What is it? Like, Fifty Shades of Grey? I felt like I was reading that. I try to avoid that. Because I don't... I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird. I don't want to read Fifty Shades of Grey. Anyway, um... Unless you pay me, you gotta pay me a lot, okay? If you're gonna, if I'm gonna do any erotic audiobooks, you know, you gotta pay me like millions of dollars. But anyway, um, but yeah, butterfly affection definitely. Um, I, I like it. I like the you know general like mix of like horror and, and like romance. I guess is the idea. You know, she got really yen there at the end. I mean, especially when the bad ending. It's funny how both of them, you know, both of the endings at the end are called happy endings. <laughs> I don't think. One of the one of the happy endings don't look like the others. Um, anyway, but there you go. That's it for a butterfly affection. So if you're on YouTube, you didn't know I stream these games live on Twitch, um, and I also have other playthroughs and channels. So you can look for those if you want. I guess uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See you then.